What's up, everybody? I just finished a message list. I got the mic hanging off of me. This message right here, I just, just get into it. It's called you're doing too much. Maybe you're doing the right thing, but the wrong way. I got one request of you. If this message blesses you, the only thing I'm asking you to do is share it with somebody else. Enjoy the message from you in New Jersey. You're doing too much. Got a, got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Matthew chapter number 11, beginning at verse number 28. This is what it says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Y'all, we got a word today. It's going to be tight, but I hope it's right. I want to talk from this subject, family. You're doing too much. Somebody clap your hands if you're ready for God's word. You're doing too, you're doing too much. I'd like to ease into this introduction, family, by offering an axiom for your consideration. This is for my note takers, for my teaching assistants in the chat. Prepare to type this in the chat so your brothers and sisters can see it and comprehend it properly. Here it is. When the enemy cannot take you out, his next step is to wear you down. I'm going to say it one more time for my note takers. When the enemy cannot take you out, his next step is to wear you down. When he cannot make you bad, he tries to make you busy. <laughs> All throughout scripture, we see examples of the enemy in inciting inside of people a desire to operate in this way. He attempts to accomplish this agenda by influencing us to occupy a head space and to live at a pace of life that's overcommitted, overengaged, unhealthy, and unsustainable. It is a subtle, strategic, and secret way to orchestrate self-sabotage in the lives of God's people by infecting us with a sickness that John Mark Comer calls hurry sickness. Hurry sickness is not a sickness of the schedule. Hurry sickness is a sickness of the soul. It is when the soul is so infected with fear or discontentment to the degree that there is a pathological preoccupation with busyness that causes us to pursue success in unsuccessful ways. What, what, what do I mean? What do I mean? I mean we get out of divine rhythm, which is not hustle and grind, is ebb and flow. In the cult and culture, it's hustle and grind. In the kingdom, it's ebb and flow. In culture, there's a regiment. In the kingdom, there's a rhythm. In culture, they strive. In the kingdom, we stride. Come on. In culture, they spend their whole life chasing it. Talk to me now. We, we'll talk back church, right? We are, in, in, in culture, they spend their whole life chasing it. In the kingdom, we chase him. Listen to this. And when we chase him, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, he'll make it chase us. Did you hear what I just said? When you get out of divine rhythm, it doesn't mean you're chasing the wrong thing. It just means you're chasing it the wrong way. Am I making sense? It, 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 I want you to wrap your head around this. It, it's, when we get out of divine rhythm, we're either doing too much 
of the wrong thing or too much of nothing that we don't have time for the right thing. I want you to catch what I'm saying, family, here. It's when we want to grow spiritually, but we're too busy to pray and study. Why is it so quiet in here? It's, 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 it's when we want to make more resources, but too busy to get better at something. So we keep doing more of the mediocre. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? Because we think we're stuck because we're not doing enough. When we're stuck because we're doing too much of the mediocre. Okay, come on, come on, family. Hey, guys, if it's right, even if it's tight, we ought to say amen. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. It's when we want better health but are too busy to take care of ourselves. It's when we want a better relationship. But we are too busy to sit down and talk and have tough conversations or get some help if we need some help. We're doing too much. It's a way of living that is killing us softly, it's killing our joy, killing our peace, killing our relational fulfillment killing our financial stability, killing our professional advancement. And it is a life that is more reflective of the life of Adam and not reflective of the life of Jesus. If you will listen to me, I believe this can be one of the most transformative messages this year. I said when we live this way, it's more reflective of the life of Adam the first human created, than it is of Jesus. Dr. Darius, what do you mean by that? In Genesis 3, Adam makes a decision, because he wasn't deceived, that he is going to ignore God's priorities and prohibitions and pursue his own. He makes a decision, he's going to break with divine rhythm. and do things his way. He say, in this area, my life is going to be my way, not your way, God. I want from that tree, so I'm getting it. And God said, okay. But this is what happens when you do it your way. He says, by the sweat of your brow. That sounds like grind to me. See, see, why... He said, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Watch this. It's going to take sweat now for you to, be, for you to satisfy your appetite. <laughs> that we all have appetites, spiritual appetites, emotional appetites, right? Relational appetites, financial appetites, professional appetites we all have appetites and God tells Adam for you now to get your appetite satisfied you got to sweat for it now if you do it my way I'll satisfy you without sweat did you hear what I just said and when <laughs> and, and when we become caught up in these social norms and these social trends, we are operating in ways that are consistent with Adam and not Jesus. And sweating, watch this, excessive sweating. Excessive, do you have hard seasons? Yes. Do we have hard times? Yes. Is everything supposed to be hard all the time? No. All my relationships ain't supposed to be hard. <laughs> Am I teaching the truth, Brother Brockwell? <laughs> and some, some of us know what it's like to deal with a degree and a dimension of frustration because you feel like I'm sweating, but I'm not moving. I, 
I'm wore out, but nothing is blowing up. Am I making sense? And the danger is this. Sweating leads to a sick soul. And a sick soul has symptoms. And in his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, John Mark Comer says there are 10 symptoms that show up when you're doing too much. Can I give them to you real quick? I said, can I give them to you? Okay, only this side want them. Who want them? Okay, here it is. Number one, excessive irritability. <laughs> this is the most quiet sermon I've done. This, I got more amens in the studio. Here it is, excessive irritability. Are we all irritable from time to time? Of course. But it's one thing to always be irritable. Come on, come on now. Where people you love and who love you get the worst from you. <laughs> For something they didn't do to you. They didn't even do it, but they're doing the time for someone else's crime. When you're doing too much, you're irritable. Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm trying to shift us to a kingdom consciousness where we want to be big humans and not just do big things. What we hear in culture is do big things, but we're not big humans. And so we build big things that we cannot sustain and maintain because we built something bigger than the core of our character. Did you hear what I just said? Your gift can build it, but your character can tear it down. So my question now, I'm not, see, watch this. I'm not, I'm no longer impressed with fast trajectory. I used to be impressed with people who did major things so fast. Now I'm impressed with longevity. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Yeah, I'm not impressed now with whether or not you can get it. I'm impressed now, can you keep it? Did you hear what I just said? Can you blow up and still keep your integrity? Can you have options and still say, I'm going to do the right thing? Can God trust you with influence and you not get full of yourself? It's not can you get it, can you keep it? And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I believe I'm preaching to some people who are, who are at a season in your life who are, who are at the point in your own growth and development where you're saying, I'm ready to keep it. Yeah, I I'm tired of getting and losing, having and not having. God, if you give it to me now, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, yeah, if I got excessive ir irritability, I'm, I'm doing too much. Number two, hypersensitivity. A minor infraction causes a major blow up. Constructive criticism feels like character assassination. It doesn't mean you're a weak person. It might mean you're doing too much. You're so sick. Restlessness. Here's number three, restlessness. You can't slow down and relax. Somebody tell you relax, you can't. I'm telling you. Restlessness. You go on vacation. Not realizing that you are wherever your mind is. So you can be in Dubai, 
But if you're stressed about what's going on in New Jersey, Number four, workaholism. Where work becomes, where work becomes an escape because you've attached your identity to it. So you don't know who you are if you couldn't do what you do. Who are you if you can't do what you do? <laughs> Number five, emotional numbness. Where you lose the capacity for empathy. Boy, I don't even have to. I need, I need 10 weeks just on these 10. I says, it's where you lose it. See, watch this. See, sometimes we judge people who are emotionally numb without exploring what got them there. Because if for some people, watch this, they've been too busy to actually audit and make adjustments with their circles. So they keep exposing themselves chronically to people who are consistently injuring them. So you have to be numb now to protect yourself because you're surrounded by people who don't know how to handle you properly. Did you hear what I just said? So because I won't, I won't choose differently when it comes to my friendship circle. I choose to develop a hard heart because I'm comfortable surrounding myself with people who love me but use me. Y'all okay? I got 10 minutes. Here it is. Number six, out of order priorities. It's when I'm becoming so responsible for somebody else's irresponsibility that I'm unable to be responsible for my responsibilities. Can, can, we, can we go here for a minute? I say, can we go here for a minute? See, I, I want to show you divine, I want to show you the, a divine rhythm when it comes to love. Like when it comes to priorities on who you should love. Here it is. Number one is God. Most people agree on that. Here's where the dissent and the disagreement comes. It comes with number two. Because number two is not others. That's not what the Bible say. Yes, it is, Dr. Darius. It says, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and your strength, and your neighbor. That's not all it says, though. Your neighbor as yourself inferring that if you don't love yourself well you do not have the capacity to love your neighbor well I'm not saying be obsessed with self I'm not saying be caught up in self I'm not saying idolize self but you got to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, you do not have the capacity to properly love others. Now watch this. If you don't love yourself, you can please others. Yeah, right? Because most people pleasers don't love themselves properly. Because when you love yourself properly, you know how to set up and maintain boundaries. Y'all, and some of us have to get our priorities in order. How you doing loving God? Now, how you doing loving you?
This is what David said. He said, I'm fearfully. Is that what he said? He said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. When is the last time you actually felt similarly about you? Just, 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 just think about it. Most of us don't feel that way. We are absorbed with, preoccupied with our imperfections. So fixated on what's wrong with you. And you, watch this, because if you don't appreciate the value that you bring to others, how do you expect them to? Yeah, you're a mess, but you're generous, and you're kind, and you're loyal, and you're committed, and you're dedicated, and you're selfless. You're a rider. Come on. You're a supporter. Out of order priorities, lack of care for our bodies, too busy to take care of us. Number eight, escapist behaviors, becoming preoccupied with distractions. Number nine, slippage of spiritual disciplines. Too busy for God. I'm not going to bother this because I'm going to talk about it in a later message because uh, you got spiritual strength like Samson had natural strength but your spiritual strength is connected to something that Delilah, which is a metaphor for whatever the enemy wants to use to seduce you, wants to cut off. So the enemy uses seduction to cut off the thing that's giving you strength. So we, and when I say seduction, I'm not just talking about physical seduction. I'm talking about he uses something that's seemingly attractive to pull us away from the thing that gives you spiritual strength. And so we surprise when we end up spiritually weak, but you're not doing the thing that keeps you spiritually strong. And you're not doing the thing that keeps you spiritually strong because you let Delilah get your attention. <laughs> Delilah can be friends. Delilah can be television. Delilah can be the club. Deli Is Catman do still open or no? No. Okay. No. Okay. Del <laughs> what <laughs> what Delilah can be whatever. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Number 10, isolation. You're doing too much. You're surrounded by people but still feel lonely. See, you can be physically present but emotionally absent. Some of us are surrounded by people that really don't even know where you are right now in this season. And this is what I'm telling you. Guys, this is a word from God, I believe. We live in a culture that's captured by these issues. This is normal in culture. This is the spirit of this age. But how many know, when I just listed those 10 symptoms, how many know that is not the way God intends for us to live? Am I making sense? I got three minutes. Are y'all all right? I want you to catch this. You do not have to use culture's methods to get God's blessings. I'm telling you the way you're being taught to get it is not the way to get it. And even if you do get it, you lose you. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now you've lost you, so now there's no fulfillment. Now there's no excitement. Now there's no happiness. Now there's no contentment. And so what do people do? They get possessions while losing their person. They get accomplishments while abandoning their identity. Then they get infected with emptiness and they have to fill that emptiness with something that's self-destructive. So now they have to stay high to stay happy. I'm not judging anybody who has that struggle. I'm not judging you. That's, I, I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. I know people use certain things for medicinal purposes. I'm not judging anybody, but this is what I am saying. I'm saying check your motive. And am I having to always depend, to depend on something to bring me down? Let me mellow me out. What's going on in my soul? What's happening with my pace of life? Dr. Darius, how can you say this? Because the most productive person in human history did more in three years than we can do in 300. We study in everybody when it comes to productivity except for the most productive person in human history. Who did more than Jesus? Listen to me, who did more than Jesus? And everything you read about, and the Bible says he did so much, we can't even put in the Bible everything that he did. It would take volumes and volumes of books. He did it all in three years, and he took naps. Y'all not ready? Y'all not ready? You want me to tell you to stay up all night, not me. I'm going to sleep. And then when I wake up, I'm getting everything God's got for me. You stay up all night, watch me sleep and get it. Watch me keep my marriage and get it. Watch me keep my sanity and get it. Watch me love my children and get it. Watch me be a good pastor and still get it. Hey! I'm done, Chris. So the most productive person in human history looks at a group of people who are practicing religion in a way that feels like a heavy yoke. There are 613 commandments these people are trying to keep. And what kind of stress is that? Did I say the wrong thing? I sinned. Let me go get a sin offering. I, I, okay, let me go kill a goat. Okay, wait a minute. Somebody made me mad. I got to go kill another goat because I killed, I got a goat and I'm getting ready to take it to the temple to sacrifice for a sin offering, but I ran into somebody, got on my nerves. I sinned again, so I had to turn right back around, go get another goat and bring it back for a peace offering. It's a heavy yoke. And Jesus looks at people who are practicing religion that way and tells them, come unto me. Hadabaho. Y'all miss what I just said. He said, come unto me. Come unto me, all you who are weary. You tired of living life like this? Come to me. You tired of that burden? Come to me. You tired of practicing your religion that way? Come to me. He said, if you're weary, And heavy later, come to me. Now I want you to, I want you to, I want you to watch what he says here. I'm done. He says, I want you to come to me. He says, take my yoke upon you. Meaning, this thing you've been yoked up with, get out from underneath that. And put my yoke upon you. And watch what he says now. He says, for I'm gentle. He say, life handling you harshly. Life is harsh. You've been handled harshly. He say, I'm gentle. And watch what he says. You will find rest for 
your soul. Teach it, teach it. Not rest for your body. He said, I'm going to give you something sleep can't. Because some of you sleeping, but you're still tired. Because the problem isn't that your body's fatigued. The problem is your soul's fatigued. Your mind's fatigued. Your emotions are fatigued. Your will is fatigued. Your imagination is fatigued. He said, I'm going to give you rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you. Intimacy with me. I'm done. And learn from me. Let me tell you what we've been doing, which is why we got hurry sickness. We've been learning about him. And Jesus is like, I want you to learn from me. He said, you've been learning about what I did instead of learning from me so that you can see what you can do. He said, the disciples, he said, I got such good rest. We was in the middle of the storm. The disciples had to wake me up. I'm on the same boat. <laughs> they, they say, don't you care that we perish? He said, oh. Peace be still. What y'all want to eat? <laughs> Am I saying live a life of laziness? The Bible speaks against laziness. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Am I saying not to work toward goals and dreams? No. I'm saying you do not have to reach goals in a way that destroys your soul. That's part of the curse that came from what Adam did. Jesus absorbed that curse. So if I'm not in the kingdom, yeah, I got to hustle and grind. So all the people telling you to hustle and grind don't have Jesus as their example. They got to hustle and grind. But Jesus said, if I put my priorities in order, the things that they chasing, they come to me easily. Can I tell y'all a quick testimony? Can I tell you a quick testimony? I use myself as an example. I tell you before, not because I'm your example. Jesus is your example. I use myself because early in preaching, when I used to use other people without their permission, they would get upset. So I'm using me. I remember one time I was... Um, this was early on. We had probably just got in this building. And uh, some of y'all remember this. We were doing local television. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we used to come on on Sunday nights. It was like right before, right after Geno Jennings, something like that, whatever that station was. So we used to, whatever that station was, I can't remember, but we used to come on. Okay. So we used to be on that, on that station, right? And I remember there were some opportunities for us to, um, to go on like larger stations that would actually reach more people and whenever people would talk to me about it or pitch that to me they were always pitching what it would do for me oh Darius if you do this it's gonna, it's gonna blow you up man you gonna be a household name if you do this and I always hear it and I would say man they always talking about what it's gonna do for me but local TV actually helps the church. You got me? And so, I remember sitting in a few of those meetings. I remember sitting in meetings with consultants and people saying all the things that we could and we should do. But for me, These words would always come in my mind. I used to say them to y'all all the time. Keep it kingdom, Darius. What's the king's way? If you try to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose it, you'll save it. I say, nah, if, 
if it won't help the church, I don't, I don't need to do it because I'm, if, if I was about me, I wouldn't be passing. I, I, would, I would stay and went to law school. I made some tough decisions. Man, you should do this. I said, no, we're going to invest in staff because the ministry is not in the building. The ministry is through the people. And I remember having those. You know how sometimes you make a right decision, but uh, <laughs> you still need somebody to tell you it's right? It's like, I know I just made the right decision, but I need somebody to tell me it's right. And there was this one time, anyway, I was sitting, I was having a conversation with, uh, I don't like the name drop, but I was having a conversation with a really influential leader. We were in New Orleans. We were sitting there at breakfast. And, um, I didn't know this leader at that point, but Ty Tribbett let me go to breakfast with him. And, I met, and I'm sitting across and uh, talking with him through some of the things. And he looked at me and said, you won't miss a thing. This is what he said. He said, because you just showed God you're a man he can trust. Yeah. Woo! And not too long ago, I hugged that leader after I had spoke at an event, and he whispered in my ear, I told you. I don't know who this is for, but I want to tell somebody there's an I told you coming. In your future, if you will do it the king's way, your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, your heart has not conceived. So I don't care if you feel behind schedule. I don't care if you feel like your exposure doesn't match your potential. I don't care if you feel like what you're doing is not working. Do not break divine rhythm. God say, watch me make good on my word. He said, I'm going to do it so quickly. Is that what he said in Amos? I'm a, the message version says, I'm going to make your head swim. He said, it's going to happen so fast. Your head's going to be swimming. And so we come against, we pray against this hustle and grind culture. That's got you too busy to look your children in the face. That's got you responding to them in a spirit of irritability when all they're trying to do is get your attention. They're not even doing anything wrong. But when you're doing too much, you get irritated with them calling your name. And I'm telling you, especially if you got young children, you better enjoy it. Because there's a day you're going to miss those days. People ask me about parenting older children. I say, when they're young, you got to kick them out of your room. When they get older, you got to try to drag them out of theirs. You don't want to live that way. Some of you, not everybody, but some of you, you got a good spouse. God has blessed you. I'm not saying they're not. Some of you don't. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. They're just not good at marriage. Did he just say that? Yes. But when you're doing too much, you don't even have time to properly value and appreciate the good thing God gave you. I'm going to tell y'all something. Some of these mothers, these mothers around here, y'all don't even understand this. This is why we always going to have a generation of diverse church. Some of these mothers around here, my wife and I got married in our early 20s. But some of these mothers around here, y'all have no idea. They would, how many times, especially early on, they would grab Pastor Shamika, give her two or three words. I can't even tell you some of the stuff Miss Frankie told her. <laughs> 
Ms. Franklin say, take care of that man. I'm afraid we losing that, y'all. The generations that raised us, they might not have done big things in our eyes, but they were big people. That's how we were able to do big things. And now we're, we're trying to do big things, but we're not big people. And when you're not big people, you can't raise big people. You're doing too much. I'm not saying do nothing. I'm saying do, do the right things. I'm done. I don't think we talk about this enough. I'm going to say one more thing. Sometimes when you hear a message like this and the Holy Spirit brings some conviction, you start thinking about all the stuff you wish you could do over in the past and you start feeling bad. See, don't let the conviction, don't let the devil take conviction and create condemnation. I feel that and we just, we speak against that right now. You will not let the devil tell you how bad a person you are. I hear that. I speak against that. That you mess your children up. I speak against that. That you're never going to be able. It's too late for you now. We, we speak against that. You're never going to be able to fix it. We speak against that. God is a God who orchestrates new beginnings. I'm out of time. final blessing we want safety may the Lord God bless you and keep you may God cause his face of favor to shine upon you how about so may God be gracious to you may he protect you may he provide for you and above all else may he grant you peace this is my prayer for your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our streams and any of our videos. All right. If this message bless you, do me a favor. Share it with somebody else. I'll see you next time.